So we recognize example number three as um, the what uh, power series that represents the sine function that we saw on a previous day. And if you think about it, the question here is asking us to find the radius of convergence. Uh, the radius of convergence is going to be infinity because what we saw is the more terms we pick up, the infinite number of terms that we pick up, um, we're going to match exactly the sine graph on its whole domain. So we should expect that the radius of convergence is going to be infinity. So let's see how that looks when we apply the ratio test to determine the radius of convergence, which we already know. Okay, so using the ratio test, So I know it just flashed up there at you, but I figured it takes too much time for me to sit there and write it with this pen. So you can write faster than I can with this pen. We're going to find the limit of the ratio of a term with its next term. So we uh, divided, uh, which is multiplying by the reciprocal. So here's where we're at. Let's kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay, we can't apply the limit right now because uh, we're going to get indeterminate. So let's do some cleanup here. Um, I'm going to reach across here and just note that, not that these two actually cancel each other, um, but when you apply the absolute value, um, they really don't have any effect on the answer at the very end stage of this problem. So I'm going to include them here in the setup, but I'm just going to say to myself, you know what, at the end, it doesn't matter if this is negative and this is positive the absolute value is going to be positive. So I think it's good to include it in your setup, but at this point we can kind of say that we're just canceling them. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. This would be 2n plus 2 plus 1 more. So all of this right here becomes 2n plus 3. And so in between here also I'm going to have 2n plus 3. It's kind of a mess, uh, but I'm going to do this cleanup here. If you don't want to, um, you know, cross this off here. If you want to just wait and do it over here, that's fine too. Uh, everything else looks good, I think, at this point. All right, so what do we have? Okay, I'm going to have x raised to the 2n times what? x cubed times 2n plus 1 factorial left on top. And in the denominator, I'm going to have 2n plus 3 factorial from here, and then I'm going to have x to the 2n times x to the first. Okay, a little more cleanup before we can evaluate this limit. Okay, we know these are going to cancel. We'll be left with x squared. And what we can do down here is we can expand. Okay, think about this. This right here, this value is greater than this value. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand a few, pull a few out, and we're going to say that this is equal to 2n plus 3 times quantity 2n plus 2, decreasing by 1 each time to go from 3 to 1 so that I can cancel. 2n plus 1, and we can slap on the factorial here, jump back into it. Okay, so notice what we have here then that 2n plus 1 factorial will cancel with this um, expression here. So what we have left then is the product 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2. Okay, all right, now coming back and thinking about the ratio test and where we're at. Okay, um, I'm finding a limit as n goes to infinity, so x squared has no bearing on my limit. Um, you can think about, you know, if it was a constant, pulling it out front here, just kind of unclutter your problem. So I'm going to have x squared, absolute value of x squared. Absolute value is not really necessary because squaring something is going to make it positive anyway. But I'm going to just go ahead and leave it on there. Good morning. Madison Stone, can you please come to the AP's office? Madison Stone, can you please come to the AP's office? Thank you. Okay, and as we're writing this, I hope you're kind of looking at this going, I know what that limit is. The denominator is going to get super large, so we know that this limit right here is going to go
to zero. There it is. Okay. And so what we end up with is absolute value of x squared times zero, which gives us zero. Which is wonderful because remember, we're in the ratio test. <clears throat> and if we're in the ratio test, if we get a number that's less than one, we know that the, the, um, that the series converges. Also think about in the context of our series. If you think about it, okay, what this is saying is for any fixed value of x, no matter what x is, well, stop. For any value of x, okay, the limit, I guess I can come back in here, for any fixed value of x, the limit's going to be zero. And if the limit is zero by the ratio test, that tells us that the series is converging at that x. So all x, okay, at all x, the series is going to converge. Okay, what does that tell us, big picture? That this expansion, this polynomial, okay, uh, to infinity is going to be exactly equal to the sine curve. The functional values match up. So I'm just going to kind of put a little statement here. Okay, so don't get confused with, you know, the radius of convergence equals zero and all that stuff. You know, just think about what's happening here. Um, in the ratio test, we got zero, so that tells us, okay, that our radius, oh, our radius of, oh, no. the pins had a break. I don't know what's going on. This is crazy. The radius of convergence is infinity, converges for all x. So that tells us that our interval of convergence is going to be all real numbers. All right, continuing to look at three more examples, notice that the directions have us find the interval of convergence, not the radius. Well, to get to the interval of convergence, we first have to find the radius of convergence. All we're having to do now is test any endpoints that we may have of a limited um, interval. And that's going to have us using our series test. So let's look at a few examples. Let's find the interval of convergence. So when you see that in context, know you have to first find the radius. So that involves the ratio test. Again, um, I could expand a few terms here if I wanted to look at it. Um, I could graph it to kind of see, you know, what the graph of that power series looks like. Um, you might want to take the time to do that. But okay, for our objective here, I'm just kind of paying attention to the fact that um, I'm trying to find the interval of convergence, I'm going to just use the ratio test. Uh, just something else too to look at, you know, the center is zero here. And that might become important for some work that we might need to do. Okay, let's use the ratio test. All right, so we have the setup, let's simplify it. I know I can rewrite this, so x to the n will cancel, leaving x to the first power. Let me pull out the absolute value of x. Okay, so what's this limit? Well, think of it as a rational function, um, or L'Hopital's rule. This limit's going to be uh, 1. Times 1 is just the absolute value of x. Okay, so remember, we're in the ratio test, and if we want, we want this to converge, then we need to consider and restrict all our x values, the absolute value of our x values, to be a number less than 1. Okay, that's the ratio test. Remember the three cases. All right. Okay, so what does this tell us? Our center is at 0. Um, look at the coefficient on x. Our coefficient right here is 1. Okay, so, uh, and with the center of 0 is all as well. Okay, our coefficient here is 1. 
So that tells us then that our radius of convergence is 1. I have to stay within one unit of my center, which is 0, in order for those x values, okay, when I plug in here for this power series, um, to converge. Meaning that any x value between negative 1 and 1, when placed in here, and when generated a bunch of terms right here, when you add it together, the sum is going to converge. All right, so radius is 1, the interval of convergence. Oh, no. Okay, we have to stay within one unit of the center, so it looks like it's going to be, right now, negative 1 to 1. Okay, and prior to now, we would have just left it, but we have to test the endpoints, and this is what that looks like. I'm just putting a little note to myself, test endpoints, meaning, uh, can I go as far as negative 1? Will negative 1 work if I were to expand all these terms right here and plug negative 1 in? Um, would it create a series of constants that converge? Uh, same thing with 1. The question is the same with 1. Okay, here's we how we do it. Let's let x equals negative 1. So go back to the series. And everywhere you see x, plug in negative 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 raised to the n power over n. Okay, at first glance you might think that this is a divergent p-series, but remember the p-series are all positive terms, and this is an alternating series. So here's where we have to draw back into all our different tests on constants. Okay, use the AST. So I'm just going to put a little note to myself here what I'm using. I'm using the AST, the alternating series test. And remember, that's a test only for convergence, not divergence, just convergence. Now, along the way, um, when we do the first part of the AST test, uh, it could be that um, the nth term test uh, applies. And that test is only for divergence. All right, so the two parts of the test. Number one. Let's look at the absolute value of the nth term. So what's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n? Well, that's 0. And that's the first part of the test, and that um, checks. That has to be true. Okay, and the second part of the test says that um, every later term has to be less than every previous term in value. So that would be everywhere I see a n plus 1, I'm going to replace it. Everywhere I see a n, I'm going to replace it with n plus 1. Now remember, this is just 1 here, so n plus 1. Okay, I'm going to put a question mark here. Is that less than, always less than 1 over n? Ah, just n. Yep, that checks. We know this will always be smaller than this term right here if we're increasing the denominator. All right, so what does that mean? That means I can go all the way over to negative 1, so I need to come back up here, which is a starting place right here, and I need to change that to a bracket for inclusion. That x value, when placed in for x, when you generate all those terms, when you add them together, that sum will level off. It'll reach a limit. The sequence of partial sums, the limit of that will reach a limit. Okay, let's test the other endpoint. When x is 1, we have 1 to the n, which is just 1, 1 over n. Uh, we can just stop right here. There's no work. We know what this is. We know this is a divergent p-series. So just a note to yourself. Use p-series. And it's just divergent. It's actually the harmonic series when the p-value, the power, is 1. Divergent. Okay, so we're done. This is our answer. We tested the endpoints.
So um, considering how lengthy these, these examples are, in another video, I'm going to just do these last two examples.